Welcome on in everybody. Welcome to the examine a video where we take a look at the northern section of the beginning of level one. Let's hop right in. I figure seeing this is the first time we could talk about it. You're going to be playing as the unknown 99% of the time, unless you want to challenge. In the beginning, you only have one choice, which is the unknown. The reason we take the unknown is they can cast spells and they also can have the companion Darren. As far as I know, the other two that I have here cannot. So we always select the unknown. This is our character screen. You can see you can change your physical settings. Smaller, lighter, heavier, taller. Taller and heavier and brawnier means you're going to be a little bit stronger, do a little bit more damage. You're going to be able to knock things over a little bit easier. It's going to be a bit slower, harder to slow down, kind of clumsier. You can also change your age, which just changes your center of gravity slightly, kind of pushes your hips down and in. You can mess with your voice. Pick the voice that's right for you. And of course, we have all sorts of other options. We're going to change this guy's name here. Uh, tutorial to, to, to Toots. Toots. We're going to call him Toots. Toots. Four, five, six was my number. I don't know. Something like that. We have hairstyle changes. Of course, none of these have any effect except for the body type. All right. This is global EXP. You start with none. We have a little bit. So we've added a few in. If you only start with one skill, pick remis or repost. Those are what you're going to want to start with nine times out of ten, unless you're doing a specialty build, which you're not uh, if you're this is your first run. If this is not your first run. Pick some other stuff. Me, I'm kind of throwing in some magic stuff to start out with. Get my uh, my magic kicked off quicker. That way I can get a few extra spells. To, well, I don't start with them, but I have a few extra spells available to learn. The clothing doesn't really matter, except you want one shirt, one pair of pants and the shoes. It's more of a color preference than anything. All right, let's head into the game. Oh, yeah, before we go in there, you got to pick what spell to start learning. You have a lot of choices. You have mind and, and uh, force. This is the force skills. Barrier is a good choice over here because you can give yourself a little bit of protection. You'll start learning that right away. You won't have it right away, but you'll start learning it right away. Personally, um, well, if you don't, uh, if you're just starting, you probably will end up with a mind spell instead, but uh, Personally, I like Kinetics over Barrier because Kinetics is going to get us uh, a spell that we want pretty early on in the build that I'm doing. So instead of Barrier, I'm going to pick Kinetics and that's what we're going to go with on this one. All right, don't forget to change your default settings as far as you, what you're going to have your hot button set to. Set Align Camera to Space. When you're fighting, you're going to hit Space and that will line your camera back up behind you so you can see a little bit better. We'll go over that a bit more. All right, so you wake up in this room. You've got the clothes on your back and nothing else. Now with Xanima, you use the mouse to move around when you're not in combat. If you want to get into combat, you can press tab. And then from there, you can WASD to move. Uh, you're going to use I to open up your inventory. You gain experience by opening all texts and scrolls by ex uh, yeah, exploring different areas and by fights, getting into fights with things press tab twice or you can right click to close any of the windows that you have we're gonna look around this room we picked up the torch it's very important to have the torch you're gonna need it there's a lot of dark spots in this uh this area all right there's a weapon that's a spike you can pick that up if you like it's a little bit too short for my liking it doesn't have very good reach on it so what we're gonna do is take a look around the room take your time spend your time examining everything in the room x examin examin examina Examine everything in the room or examine and in everything in the room, whatever you want to do. You'll find that there are many different choices that you have. We have this piece of wood debris. We're actually going to take that with us just in case. It's not likely that we're going to use it because it doesn't have any real stats. We could use it even without stats. We can still swing it. It's still a weapon. Just like if you were to dig around in here, there's another one in here that kind of looks like an X. I think it's like a signpost or something that could be used as a weapon. We are not going to use it as a weapon. We have another weapon of choice around here. Uh, it's the spiked club. It is uh, it's somewhere here. There's a there's also a, a barrel lid cover we can use as a shield. But because we need to carry the torch in our offhand to begin with, we're not going to take it with us. And because my particular run, when we get our companion, I don't want him using a shield. Ah, here it is. Okay. See how that's much better. Uh, well, 
This one has nothing, so anything is better than nothing. But I still think it's even better than the spike because it has a little bit of reach to it. So let's grab this. And like I said, there's a barrel lid in here. I'm not even going to locate it, but you, it's very easy to, to figure it out. Let's take your time exploring the rooms, pick things up, move things. There's always hidden things. Get in the habit of moving things and continuing to pick things up and move things because you get tired of doing it after a while. Go, ah, oh, this is like the eighth bedroll I've moved and nothing happened. Eventually it will. Okay, here's the map. All right, you can see where we start down there in the corner. North is if you take a right after you head out of this room. You take a right and you'll see we head north up into that blue area, which is where we go. You see that dot up there to the north of the north? That is the uh, location where Darren is. We also have the maze. We have main. We'll do that later. To keep this video under an hour, I needed to cut it into pieces. So see how we're heading north now? We don't have the compass yet. We will grab that eventually. This is the north area. The other two areas are locked. You can't go to those right now. So don't even bother. Don't even bother. All right. Let's press P to open up our magic menu and pick a spell to put on our hot key. We're going to pick our little force blast here. A boom. It's going to be very useful. The other one is uh, basically read minds and intents. We don't really use that as much. All right, so we got a guy in here. Uh, if you do use your quick spell, it's going to automatically drop you into combat. Knock him on the floor, bang him in the head. Give yourself a little room. Combat is physics based, so you're kind of swinging your mouse to swing a little harder. Or you just left click to out. Oh boy. I'm a little rusty. I haven't played the game in a couple weeks. Probably should have gone into arena first. If you need to know more about. Oh, there he goes. Zombies do tend to run off if they get a little bit skittish. Anyway, we're going to close the door as we go in here, uh, just so he doesn't sneak up behind us. There is something in this room we want to take a look at. Anyway, if you need to know more about combat, there's tons of videos on combat and you can practice in the arena mode. And I do suggest you do that. I do suggest you watch videos and you practice, 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 which I did not do. All right, we're going to compare our pants. Looks like these pants we got here are a little bit better. Our comparisons show not only pips for what they have for um, coverage and for different types of defense, but they also show us the make and the condition. Make is more important than condition, but both are important. If the pips are absolutely equal, look for something that's better made. And if those are equal, look for something that's in better condition. So it goes pips, make, and then condition. That's what you want to be taking a look at. Even empty rooms, this room has nothing in it. No treasure, no, no zombies, no nonsense, no laundry, no dairy. But uh, we go in there anyway for the experience, for the EXPs. All right, so he's back again. Let's, uh, let's see if we can just finish him off. Oh, he ran off again. This guy's skittish. The more you use your magic blast spell on these guys or any magic around them, the, the quicker they kind of get scared. We're back in our, our main area room here. Do the magic of editing. May not have caught it, but I kind of did a quick little edit there. Anyway, let's fight this guy. Let's get him on the ground. He's not going to have anything. You can tell he's bare chested and has just a piece of junk in his hands, I think. Is it a hatchet? I'm not sure. But uh, we'll get him down. Tooth sweet. All right. Let's check him out and see what he has. Whoa. Hey. Good golly, Miss Molly. Just somebody running right through here. Running right the heck through. Okay. Well. Wow. Um, <laughs> I guess we will, uh, grab the hatchet and fight you first. Come on here. All right. Again, use your force spell to knock him over. Oh, missed. I got him. And then try to do an overhead. There are a couple different ways that you can swing. You can thrust, you can overhead swing, and you can do normal swings. All those things I suggest you learn in the tutorial. I am not the person for that, obviously, as you'll see throughout this video. Um, they do require button combinations. Or some require button combinations. Oh, another another runner. We got another runner. We've got a runner, Bob. Okay. We will catch up with that runner in a little bit. All right, compare the trousers. Nothing good. Okay. All right. 
Again, we're heading north. We've already looked in these two rooms, but I think our zombie friend... Oh, there's our zombie friend. All right. And again, you're tapping spacebar once. Get that camera behind you when you get out of position. If you don't do that, you're going to find it really difficult to WASD because WASD directions do not change. Your character's left is always A. Your character's right is always S. Uh, sorry, D. S is always backwards. W is always forward. It feels like it should change as your orientation on the page changes on the page on the screen changes, but it doesn't. So I suggest getting used to tapping it to get the camera back behind you, as you see we're doing right here. Ah, <sighs> can we please put an end to this? Not even sure why this one ran into our room. Like I, I cannot, I can't, I can't right now. Down you go. I am way off. As you can see, the combat takes a lot of getting used to. I got really good at the combat for a while, but because my muscle memory is gone from two weeks off, I am completely lost again. Should you fight everything in the game? No, not everything. You should fight mostly everything. There are certain fights where it's low reward, high risk, and we'll talk about that later. We, we will get into fights that I can guarantee you are going to be bad choices. I'm not going to say on purpose because you never know which ones are bad choices until you make them. Well, you do, but some of them you do. This one was decent reward because they might have some clothes we can wear. They might have a better weapon. And actually, they, I think their weapon is better. But oh, every once in a while, your force blast will kill them. And that's what happened in this case. They have a, a two-handed axe here, which is a great weapon if, and I say if, it didn't make it so that we couldn't use our torch. Two-handed weapons require two hands, and the torch requires being in the offhand. In certain circumstances, you will see that we will switch when the lighting is good enough. Uh, and you can also see here, I was, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, comparing the the different makes of the, uh, the shirts and so on here. Okay. Boots are boots. Boots are 90, 90, 90 to 9 to 9 times better. Uh, always better than shoes. So we will get rid of them. Again, you can close the menus just by uh, right clicking on the, the window itself or by clicking tab twice. Puts you in combat and then out of combat real quick. We will grab this other axe. See, I'll show you we pick up the axe, you can do it. Now we cannot use the torch. It's very dark, can't see anything. Put the torch back in your hand, now you can see, but you see the axe has now left your hand. So we will have to stick with our hatchet for now. So, hatchet, axe, we will eventually get something better, believe me. All right, grab some stuff on your way. Don't leave everything behind. You're going to want to take some equipment for your buddy that you're going to find eventually. You don't need everything, but you do want to take some of the equipment with you, especially the armor. And we'll talk about what do we want for our companion. Now you have a couple choices here. Inside on the right is the angry carpenter a hostile carpenter lady so we'll see if we can draw her out she is not super dangerous but she's hostile you'll notice some enemies start off hostile some start off docile and you can walk right around them you don't have to fight them at all but her she want to fight but we'll give her a fight that's what she wants. Another thing you might want to do is zoom in. Use your scroll wheel to zoom in in combat. It can help. Scroll out when exploring. Scroll in when fighting. All right, we're going to back out into the hallway. Probably better to stay in that room, but there's a lot of obstacles in that room. 
Sometimes you do end up getting turned around. Sometimes hallways are better as you can keep kind of walk, walk and whack, walk and whack. And it really takes some effort to get these early guys down. You don't have great weapons. Later on, even I would say by the time you get to um, the main section, your weapons are going to be so good, like one hit from you is going to be enough uh, to put them in a, in a bad way. But we still do... We want to pick as many fights as we safely can. We don't necessarily want to fight everything. Uh, I don't know. Do I want... I, th I think... I think the saw blade has a tiny bit more reach to it. it you can't really tell much by the pips. The pips are pretty close. Um, the conditions and the and the make, I'm not as worried about. What I'm worried about is that hatchet seems to be really short. So I'm going to keep that saw blade. I probably would rather have the hatchet. All right, so go back in here. Remember, even if you think the room is empty, even if you don't think there's anything there, you should still be going in. You should be moving things around. You should be taking a look. There's usually uh, the way that the way that I describe this is there's a lot of empty rooms, but most of the time you kind of they give you hints that something's up. You'll see a pile of something. Ooh, long knife. It's mm, it's not better, but I think it's even longer. It looks like it's longer than the saw blade. Anyway, the rooms will give you an idea. You'll get a feel for it eventually. And then there's some rooms that it's just quite obvious. It's like there's some logs in here and a chair. And it's like there's nothing in here. And there's a lot of those rooms. And then there's rooms that have a lot of clutter. But you can tell, oh, this is a clutter room. But usually you will be able to find at least like a chest. Oh, this is not bad. We got some wham braces here. Got some gloves. And uh, I'll check. This versus this versus. Uh, yeah, I think we can leave that stuff behind. So this is generating experience. Now the experience works in a weird way. It is not immediate. So all this exploring that I'm doing is adding to my character's experience, but it's doing it slowly. So even though I've looked through this room, I may not have been awarded the experience for it quite yet. Meaning as I'm walking around, it's sort of still adding it on. It's the same thing with the skills. It might say that you, you're learning a skill, but you won't be actually learning it fast and you won't be getting anything extra by like using similar skills or whatever. It's just, you just have to wait almost, but make sure you're doing stuff. If you stay active, if you keep active, keep exploring, keep reading anything that you find, especially reading things that you find, um, you will you will gain that experience. I think f from what I was told from one of my uh, my faithful viewers, I think fighting is the least of the experience. I think you get the least, and I, I don't mean the least as in it's not worth it. I mean because there are so few fights compared to rooms, the bulk of your experience is going to come from this exploration factor and from reading the things. It's a lot of stuff to read. Alright, let's see if we can end this guy's tenure quickly. Another thing too is you, you want to get the pattern of the fight. They swing, you back up. Then you move and hit. So they swing as you're backing up. Or you just knock them down like that and try to try to overhead swing them while they're getting up. Uh, or they just run away and you go, okay, well, I'll see you next Christmas. Jerk. Oh, he's back. Did I? Oh, man, I hit again. You can tell when you get hit. You can see the red. The red counts as wounds. Those are your wounds. The yellow is your stamina. So as the yellow reduces, you're in danger of getting knocked out. As the red increases, you're in danger of dying. So as your stamina, you can actually get knocked out six, seven, eight times in a row, and they will leave you alone until you wake up. And a lot of times they will not sit there and hover over you. They'll wait. Uh, not wait, they'll leave. 
and you'll wake up. You'll be able to pick up your weapon because you won't have it on you. You pick up your weapon and stand up and fight again. And then that red bar will get a little bit more full. Don't worry too much about losing a fight or getting knocked out right away. Uh, your first runs are going to be rough, especially once you get past uh, the second level. Once you get into the catacombs, when the skeletons start showing up, the skellies, skellies can do some hard damage real quick. Ooh, good, good stuff. It was kind of hard to see what was in there. Uh, but I'm glad we got in there. Okay, check the pants. And put the pants in here. We're going to want some of this stuff to put the skull cap on. Take the better of the two gloves for Darren. We're only making plans for Darren. Ooh. All right. So let's keep the ones that are in better condition with better make. Looks good. All right. You're going to find that as this video goes on, there's quite a few areas that are a little boring. But what we will do is I'll try to give you some more idea of uh, the things you need to know while doing this. A lot of times, look at the walls, make sure that you, you notice when things are stacked up. We'll fight this guy, we're doing this. Um, when things are stacked against a wall and piles try to move things, you can't move everything with just your hands. There's a spell called throw, which lets you move heavier, heavier things that you can't move with your hands. Um, but if you notice things that like a bunch of boards piled up against a wall, move it. There might be a hole in there. There might be a chest behind there. Um, there might be something underneath. A lot of times your special items will be hidden underneath things. Like I said, get in the habit of it. And as much as you're going to get tired, oh, check pouches. Anytime you see a pouch, always check it. Don't just assume they're empty. 99.9% .9 of the time, yes, they are empty. But that 1% of the time that you need that item, <laughs> they're going to be in uh, the pouch. Okay, now, when I come in this room, like, I'm going to, you're going to see me looking all around, doing what I would just tell you to do. Keep looking for things, and I don't even notice the compass is right there on the shelf. Get the compass. Calm. Compass is on the shelf, calm. Not that shelf, no. Let me, hang on. Let me type this in. Give me a sec. The compass is on the shelf. There we go. Compass on this shelf. Over here, calm. Over, you're, you're close. Uh, anyway. We'll come back and get it later. I forgot it on this run. I always forget the compass when I'm in this room. Okay, here's an example of a bad fight. Why is this a bad fight? Too many things to list. Oh, here they are. Uh, but the main things are the door is closed, there's not a lot of space, and there's obstacles. Plus, there's no reward to this. There's, there's really no reason to fight this guy. I should have just pushed through the door and fought him outside, but what do they do? They decide we're going to do the janky dance. Oh, that's a big hit. Right in my tummy. Right in my tum-tum. This is probably the worst room. We forget the compass, and now we get in this fight. This fight is a disaster. Oh... And he falls over. Uh, try it. You, you gotta, you gotta get the spacing right when you do that overhead strike on guys who are getting up, or else it just is not gonna work for you. And I, I take another hit. Oh, over I go. It almost looks like I'm gonna get knocked out here for a little bit. I, 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 I do prefer. I crawl up on the table. This is typical of your early Ixanima fights. Oh, now he's stuck and I can't... Look at this. I can't remember how to strike and crouch at the same time. You got to know how to do that, guys. So when you do set your hotkeys, try to memorize where your hotkeys are. Because <laughs> I could have killed him so easy there if I just did overhand strike with crouch, but instead I just flounder. Like a... Like a play-by-play -play here. All right, I think we got it. Oh. Bad strike, but it won. All right. Okay, let's just check him real quick, see if he's got anything. I don't see anything. 
All right, so there's, there's a bunch more of this exploration. This area is not super interesting, so I'm gonna fast forward. Plus, it sounds funny when I do it. it almost sounds like a an old school Mario or Zelda game. I don't know. It, it's funny when you speed up music, the, the creepy, tense music of this game suddenly becomes ridiculous. Don't worry about the rooms. You'll, in the fights, you'll find all this stuff. It's all pretty easy. This area is kind of a big, circly area. I want to get at least to a certain part. And, uh, yeah, right about here. Okay, so this is where... You'll see where that X is. We're there now. It's kind of where we first started heading north. Just behind us. Uh, down uh, to this... No, well, it's hard to tell direction because I didn't get the compass. Anyway, this is what you would see... If you just kept going north instead of did all that exploring that we just did when you first come into that hallway. You come out of your safe room, you take a right, you head straight up that hallway. This would be your first thing that you would see. This is this area. North is to my... Well, it's to the top of your screen now. North is to the top of your screen. So we would have come in the door to the south. You'll recognize it. It's pretty easy to find this area. A lot of people end up here first before doing that little side skit that we did there. You can see this is, uh, these are the rooms that we were in before. All right. And this little room off of here is like the, uh, I don't know what it says. I guess it's the cart room or whatever. I come in here because I like the metal rods here. They're one-handed. They're pretty good. They're not great balance, but they do decent damage and they've got a good reach and they're, especially the most important thing is they're one-handed. We want a one-handed weapon that's going to do some good damage, and this this is it for now until we find a real weapon, which we will find eventually. Uh, there's also a crate over here that you can grab. Remember, don't just come in and find like one or two things. Check the whole room. There's usually crates. There's also great websites uh, that you can find. Just go into Google and type in Xanima Interactive Map and get yourself a map. I don't consider it cheating. Just remember that the maps in the game, the in-game maps themselves that you find are not 100% accurate. They have yet to be updated. So um, keep that in mind. Even the online maps, I think, are a little bit off. I don't consider it cheating if you want to just look at the maps. You can turn the items off. You don't have to have all the interactive stuff. You can just see the map. Because you do eventually get it anyway, and they usually give it to you like three three quarters of the way finished of the map. It's a pain in the butt. So if you feel like grabbing the map early, don't let anybody tell you that's cheating. Play the game your way. Well, to be fair, when I played the game, I did not use the interactive maps at all. Uh, in the levels I have not explored, I have not looked at the interactive maps for. I, the only interactive mapping I do now is for levels one through five, which I kind of know by heart there's a lot of bathrooms in here by the way if you don't know but, ah, ow barked my shin there's a lot of bathrooms they the developer apparently felt it would be very realistic to have toilets everywhere so we have toilets everywhere lots and lots of toilets what we're looking for now is a special room. Uh, we've been in here. Oh, we've been in here already. Haven't we been in here already? Like I said, the, the area that we're going to is a big loop. It's a square loop with uh, rooms on the inside of it. So let's wander back a bit. Okay. All right. So this is, like I said, this is where we would normally have come in again. Where I put that X before. We kind of looped around a little bit to pick up the metal bars and so on. So we come to this. And uh, no, not that way. But we'll get this guy out of the way first. <sighs> I got to get better at those overheads. I was getting really good at them before I took my, my hiatus. Oh, he blocked. He blocked. 
That <laughs> crazy man. I missed again. I feel like Phil Collins in the 80s. I think I missed again. Uh-huh. Oh. Did I miss again? I think I missed again. Uh-huh. Alright. Good enough. He's dead. He's de he's already dead. Calm. You don't have to keep hitting him. All right. Anything good? I don't see anything. Basically, we got to get to Darren. Is the the whole point of this? I probably should have fast forwarded some of this stuff too, but. I'll just go through it. Is there anything important that I need to explain while we're doing it? There's so much. Oh, you see that blocked door? That was what I kind of wanted to point out, was that some of the doors are blocked on one side. You have to kind of roam around the other side. All right. Here we go. All right. See this round room? This is important. When you find this little round room, first of all, go get this stuff out of the box. Because you're living in a box. Living in a cardboard box. All right. You'd be surprised. Uh, you know, you find stuff like that in boxes that sometimes have nothing. Otherwise, you know, and you're like, oh, man, that box never has anything. Then one time you open it up and it's got a crazy helmet in it or something. Or oh, I found a breastplate, like an actual, like full breastplate, which you're not supposed to get. I found it on level one. One of the boxes that has nothing. OK, here's Darren. Here he is. Farm boy extraordinaire, right across from the round room. Uh, you can do fighty Darren, you can do mule Darren. Fighty Darren needs to fight early, give him your best weapons and your best defense and all that other stuff. Mule Darren, you kind of give him stuff and save him for later. Either way, you want him fighting early on, at least to get his very basics up. If he does not fight, he does not train, he does not get better. So while the enemies are not too dangerous, you're better off getting him a little experience. The more you let him fight, the better he gets for later on. But of course, later on, sometimes the fights are easier to manage without him. Or the levels are easier to manage without him. Or you're just scared that he'll get pummeled to death. So some people just give Darren the torch and say, stand back, Darren. Or they say, wait here. And they lock him in a room. Right now, we're just going through the standard dialogue. I don't think it makes a difference. Somebody said it does. Somebody was like, oh, you get more experience and uh, he's a better fighter if you answer it. I don't think so. At least I haven't noticed it. And the one thing that you're going to want to do, if you do want to have him fight, give him armor. Give him the good stuff. Keep the secondary stuff you. The marginal differences between the things make a bigger difference for him, I believe, than they do for you. At least that's how I feel about it. All right. So I'm going to almost quite literally take everything that I'm wearing and give it to our boy D here. We want him to have and the, the layering in the game is a little weird. You're going to have to get used to it. Things that you think should be able to layer together sometimes won't. And other things where you're like, oh, that can't. No way you can put a vest over a tunic. Well, you can put a vest, a tunic and a shirt on in the game. But yet you can't put a vest and a jacket on. Because, gee, that doesn't make any sense, right? Why would anyone wear a vest underneath a jacket? But you have to have a layering system somehow. But you'll be surprised how much you can actually layer on. So do try. Try layering as much as you can. Like funny weird things like sometimes jackets will take your van braces off. So you get your nice little forearm braces. As soon as you put a jacket on, it's like, nope, sorry. Can't wear those. Or like uh, the shin guards. You can't wear shin guards with boots. But hey, again, you have to have a layering system somewhere. So once we've got Darren suited up, I like to give him uh, the best two-handed weapon available. And then I'm just going to take everything else that we can't keep or wear. And we're just going to toss it on the floor. Anything that he can't wear that I don't want is going to go on the floor. All right, here, take the sledgehammer. He's great with a sledgehammer. You're going to find that Darren, when used correctly, is a beast. He's a powerhouse. He's absolutely devastating. He's he's a man on the mic. He just he rocks. All right. 
let's head on out. There's not a lot left to explore. Well, there is, but um, I will show you very quickly some of the, the highlights. Now, this is an important room because this is where there's been an altercation. You can kind of do a little investigating. Again, if you're not exploring, if you're not picking stuff up, if you're not moving things, you're not finding things. The reason that I cannot have to sit around and move every darn thing. Well, first of all, there's a lot of stuff I'm skipping. But second of all, I know where a lot of the, the hidden stuff is. So I know what to pick up and what not to pick up. But you, as an explorer, should be picking everything up and looking underneath it. Because if you don't, you're going to miss something. For instance, under the table, there's a key. And when you use the key, it's going to get you into a locked room in the back of this. Let's go there now. If you try to open it, it won't open. Hear that clicking? So double click the key and then click on the door. It will unlock it. And you're always going to end up with more than one key. Believe me, you're going to have a lot of keys. So get used to it. Once you leave a floor, they're no longer useful. So you could, I guess, throw them out. This guy usually... I don't think he has anything on him really good. Sometimes if your clothes are not great, like your shirt, your pants, your pants might be better. I mean, his pants and shirt might be better, but right now I think we're pretty good. And then we have the locked chest, which is going to... Ooh, very nice. So, Darren? Darren, dear, would you please try these on? This is like the, uh, the changing room at Walmart. Darren? Pants for you. Thank you, Darren. The great thing about getting Darren suited up with everything that's really, really good is that it's very easy to know you put the pants on Darren and then the pants you took off of Darren, you can put on yourself because you know he's got better pants than you. It's almost like a, a way to self-organize. Anyway, people do talk about the lore of this room and like guy locked himself in the back or they locked the guy in the back and then these two guys fought to death and the guy starved. You know, there's all sorts of questions that we have about this room. All right. Uh, this is another... No, this is just the wine room. That's right. That's the room that's... That's the blocked entrance to the room that we can't get in. All right. What we're looking for now is there's one other... Oh, this is this room, right? All right. Two guys, right? I think the best thing to do in this situation is to try and draw these guys out. We don't want to fight them in this room. You saw what happens when you fight in an area with a lot of obstacles. So let's take these guys outside. Uh, how are we going to do that? Well, first, let's get Darren outside. You could take him out and tell him to wait for you. I feel a little weird about that sometimes because sometimes he does, he's not as responsive if you don't have him set to follow. So what I'm going to do is I will bring him out. Then we're gonna try to uh, try to aggro one of these guys. It is possible to aggro both and only pull one, which is kind of nice. All right, you got you coming. That's the other thing too is when you leave a room, the lights go out. It's actually Darren gets into a discussion about it because it creeps him out a little later on. Oh, spoiler alert! Spoiler! Spoiler! spoiler. Okay, back up, back up, back up, bro. We're going to bring him out. We're bringing him out. Or we'll scare him and he'll run off. That's the other thing that we can do is he might get scared and run. Look at that. Chonk. Darren is a beast. He's a beast. Two shots him. Meanwhile, I can barely walk. Look at me. I'm stumbling around. All right, this won't be as bad with one guy. We could fight in this room. This is enough space. Hey, all right. So now the only thing is you got to watch out because if Darren hits you, it's going to hurt. Yeah, like right there, that's pretty risky because Darren sometimes will take that swing, try to swing over your head and he'll actually hit you. Now, there is a way to check to see if Darren is hurt. Press T to talk and then um, you can ask him, how are you feeling? And he has like six different responses, all of which will give you an estimation of how much health he has left. He says, I'm good. He's good. He says, I'm hurt, but I can go. 
he's a little hard. If he says, I'm not feeling all that great, medium, and then I think he's got a couple other ones that we just don't want to talk about right now. And uh, Darren will chase. He won't chase far, thankfully. You got him? You got him. Faithful Darren. What a great guy. All right. Hopefully we can get the rest of this done pretty quick. Essentially, I want to get to... A room with a little trick because that's the other thing too that you're gonna find in these uh, these areas is that like look in this area like you would think there's something over here and uh, I'm just gonna move all this stuff out of the way but this is where you have to check as an explorer you have to look at these areas because this just looks suspicious this is what I'm talking about now there's no reward here so you don't actually get the reward for it but that's what you want to be doing all the rooms you go to you have gotta be doing this it's a, it's a chore it's your lot in life. It's what you've been given. So you're going to have to do it. Uh, like I said, there's one area that we got to go into. Hold on. Can we get through here? No, we're going to have to go back out. There's a barrel in front. We can try to move this stuff. Uh, I think I've tried barging into that door, but no big deal. We'll just go out back outside. We'll, we'll run around. We can do it. And out through here, and up through here, and then... Alright, and then here. You see that dirt area over there with the gate? You actually can come back through there later. Spoiler, spoiler. And here's a dead guy. Now he has, uh, if we look at him, he's got a note. So read the note, always read. Reading is fundamental, and he's got a key. Kiss. This is the key that will get you back into, uh, get you back into, will get you into the other areas that we have not explored yet. So you definitely want that key. You got to have it come with you. It's special. It's important. All right. And again, always do your comparisons. After a while, you can stop looking at shirts because you'll know. Once you get like thick pants or whatever, the, the looks of them will change. You'll you'll understand what you can do. And you can you can play around with the the zombies too. The the corpses have pretty cool ragdoll effects. You can put the chairs up. I like to put chairs up. You know that was the thing they used to do at school when we were kids. It's like put the chairs up when you're done. When you put the chairs on the table. If you have the folding chairs, you fold them and put them up on the table. You put them on those racks. You know those long. And what am I talking? Do you really need to know all this? Oh jeez. Would you like to come to my school? Once you have Darren, things get a lot easier, at least in my opinion. Darren is absolutely bestacular. Now, when you get in a situation like this, this is like the crab walk where, like, nobody is gaining anything. Like, we're just going to keep walking backwards. So in this situation, we have to... Whoa! Headshot. We have to take the lead. You can see my combat skills are already starting to improve slightly, so... There's that. I think the most important way to get your combat skills up is to practice in the arena. Get yourself in the arena. And just work it. You can even do the arena practice mode if you want to. They have two practice modes, novice and expert. If you beat the novice mode, you can go into the expert mode. And that's how I got the basics of it. You don't ever have to be super spectacular at the combat in this game to actually play the game you can find little clever ways around it there are tricks that you can do tips that you can do you can do strikes with your shield believe it or not uh, by intentionally missing a guy you overswing and then can magically end up getting uh oh here we are you, you, i'll tell you about it in a second so let's have darren wait here because we got a little trick here if you don't want the spoiler then don't watch there is a couple different ways of doing this there's a lever on that left wall over there and you can either weight that lever down 
so that it never pops. Or you can make yourself a little ramp over here. <clears throat> I feel okay telling you about this because it's quite obvious the first time that you pull that lever and that gate shuts before you can get to it that they've designed this room to teach you something and this is to teach you how to overcome obstacles by using the environment using objects in the environment object manipulation now you can get your stuff out of the way here so we can get a nice good run on let's move back and um sometimes people i hear them say they'll say yeah, i skipped this room i skipped this room because it's a pain uh a lot of times some, you're gonna feel like that but here we're gonna go run run right up the ramp go 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 run run you can do it chariots of fire dun, 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 dun. and there's a giant chest here which usually has crap in it but hey, hey not crap good stuff good stuff for darren good boots for good boots for i good boots for i and a pen if we want to write home so you can see now that it did pay to go in and uh and check this room even if there's only just the one chest sometimes you'll do it and it will literally have nothing they'll be like i think i went in here one time and it was cups like three cups inside the chest i'm like who puts three cups in a giant suitcase like that they look like the suitcases from joe versus the volcano he ties them all together and makes a raft out of them he does i ain't kidding either you can ask meg ryan she knows okay so we're gonna take uh take darren back with us again you can press t and tell darren to wait you can press t and give darren equipment you can press t and you can ask darren his feelings say so what about your feelings Derry? so we are almost completely done with this area thankfully before I get too much further, before you jump into the comments with the you missed a chest, you missed a chest, before we play you missed a chest, you missed a chest, you missed a chest, chill. I missed a chest, it's not a big deal. We're doing this just to get familiar with the map and to help people to understand what they're supposed to be doing. I am not an expert at this game. I never claim to be and I don't claim to be good at combat. I just want to get people over the fear because that's the biggest thing it's like you, you try the game once and go it's too it's, it's too hard it's too weird it's too janky i ugh, makes me feel bleh. anyway we're gonna get you over that jankiness so this brings us back to our main hallway all right i think that's as good of a time as any to end it and we'll pick up from this the next time uh actually do we want to go through and do a little no i think we're good all right. Thank you so much for tuning in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That is the north area. Next time we will be doing the locked areas, the main area. And then the time after that, we'll be doing the labyrinth. Oh, I got to get the compass. Hang on. Hang on. Let's go grab the compass first. I forgot. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Now let's go grab it. See, it was here the whole time. I knew that. I knew that comment section. Totally knew it. All right, so you open your inventory. As soon as you pick up the compass, look. Now you have north, south, east, and west there. And believe it or not, that is super important. That is super important. There are multiple compasses, so if you miss this one, you forget it, you go down the level, don't panic. There's an opportunity to get another one, but I do recommend picking this one up early as it is available right away. All right. Let's, um, let's get back to where we were. The way we were. All right. And as you can see, here we are now back at the main area. And we will enter into this area next and we'll talk about it later. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you're curious about what we're going to be doing next. Uh, well, let me just uh, give you a little sneak peek. Uh, sneak peek, sneak peek. Spoiler alert. Here's what's coming up next time. Uh-oh. There I go. Don't forget, subscribe, like, everything. Love you guys. Bye.